right, how's it going everybody? This is Ismorta, and this is episode 52 of my custom Kingdom Death Monster campaign. Now, this is the beginning of Lantern Year 17, which, uh, this probably could be a shorter settlement phase, unless stuff triggers and happens, because we only have one settlement event and no, um, what, what's the word? scripted story events on the settlement sheet. So story-wise, it should just be one settlement event unless stuff happens. But this is the current stuff that we have. Sound looks like it's good, so let me mute this. We'll get started. All right, so what you have in front of you, as you know, is the essentials. So they, these are all the things that I got from the last hunt, well, the last Nemesis encounter. Legendary Longs... Bunch of acanthus, a broken lantern, and butcher's cleaver. Here we have our shuffled innovation deck we can draw from. All of our current innovations and principles, and all of our current locations, and then the settlement event that we're gonna get. So um, I do actually have two uh, corrections from the last stream. Um, the first one is I accidentally played the entire Nemesis encounter with Emily having four armor everywhere, and that was incorrect. It should have been three, because all the pieces are two. The set gives one, but I was before I did that um, stream, I was entertaining this person having a shield, and that's why I was probably thinking to have it before, or the fact that the set bonus for the Screaming Antelope gives a bonus of two on top of the armor, but this actually only gives one. So what did that mean? Uh, that means on the chest area, when this uh, person got heavy damage, it probably should have gone to the severe injury table. So as a penalty, I just deduct this person's survival by one, saying that, oh, I would have spent a survival to prevent that hit from happening. Okay. To try to bring balance to the universe. Um, the other thing, a solo note, was uh, joy. The entire time I did Nemesis Encounter, I completely forgot to do the ability, which is one of the reasons why I brought it to the fight, which was the Phoenix Placard. This isn't like the shield. You don't have to trigger it in order to get its benefit. It happens automatically. So whenever I get hit, period, uh, the first hit that round, instead of taking physical damage, you suffer one brain damage which is really useful. But what it also meant was is all, all the damage this person took probably should have instead gone to insanity, which meant if the person got enough insanity, got hit twice, should have gotten an additional frenzy. And so because of that, I rolled a, D, a D5 and got a two. So I gave this person just two more insanity to even up the uh, what should have happened. All right, so that's the catching up. We're ready to go, let's, let's do it. Again, these are all the steps in settlement phase, but like I always say, I don't do death count or mild check milestones because I do those as they happen. And uh, departure, we're gonna do during the hunt stream, which will be the next one. So we're gonna do all the other steps. Okay, so I've already gone through setup. Now the next thing to do is the survivor's return. So we remove all temporary tokens, which I've already done. Now I just need to update everyone's um, gear grid to match what it should be. Including the fact that this person's armor should be three and not four. Okay. So, we are just repairing damage and repairing armor. So Joy should be, um, has no set bonus. So just whatever it says. So it should be three, hands should be two, body should be four, Ways should be three, and legs should be two. And then the ability to not spend survival, that was just during Frenzy, that's only during the showdown, so I, I'll erase that as well. Next up is Taken, who again, erasing the uh, cannot spend survival. The survival, the, his survival though is so faded, I can't even read what the hell it's supposed to be. I don't know if it's supposed to be a seven or an eight. It's so faded. 
So this might be incorrect. So um, I'll just take the lower two numbers since I can't read it. So I'll put seven. I just because I, I literally can't read it. <laughs> I can't write. Um, but the max is eight. So and people at the party get three anyway. So it doesn't really matter in the scope of things. Okay. So this one, it's the full set plus the bonus plus a shield. So it's whatever it says on the piece plus three. Two for the set, one for the shield. So head should be six, hand should be five, body should be two plus three is, should be five, waist should be six, and legs should be five. And that's one reason why I actually want to give everybody shield, because not only can you stop a, one speed of the monster, but also you have one more armor everywhere to, t to absorb the plus one to strength. It's so like you're fighting a level two monster in particular. Okay. Emily, get rid of, cannot spend survival, because they're just for frenzy. And then her armor should be three everywhere. Which at this point in the game is actually pretty low. So she definitely needs to have a better set and or a shield. But even so, it's better than having the rawhide gear at least, but still, it's kind of lacking. Almost to the point that maybe it's worth to get rid of the White Lion Helm's ability of plus two, since I hardly ever use it. Take off the blue charm instead of put a shield, if you know if I make one. Plus, you know, one of the weapons I want to make is the Katana Blood Sheath combo, because not only is it a really powerful attack, but you can also block with a sheath. Up to like this person, make. I eventually want to get the katana sheath combo, move the shield to someone else, maybe make an additional shield. I also want to make the arc bow, which is a phoenix bow and the phoenix lance, because they're such good weapons too. So, hint, hint, most likely I'm going to be hunting a phoenix this lantern year. What level, I don't know. I'm leaning toward level two, but most likely definitely going to be hunting a phoenix. Just because I need so many specific parts. That right now it's not quantity that's the issue, it's the fact that any particular parts is the issue. That, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Okay, Emily is good, and then Barrett. Um, should ha has the classic set, which is a plus two bonus to the alt screen and antelope stuff. So it's five, four, four, five, four. Okay. Oh, I forgot to repair heavy damage. Oops. I'm re I mean, be not not the armor, but the actual physical damage. All of the boxes that had damage. Okay, so now we're good. Does anyone have mental? No? Shouldn't? Okay, cool. So now we're good to go. Next up, we gain endeavors. So since we had four people return, and, and what I have here for the endeavors, this is what I'm thinking about doing. Just to get a preview. Um, so we get one for every person, and then we get one for cooking. So we get five endeavors, which is pretty awesome. Now, the endeavor that I really want to get is, obviously, I want to do intimacy because I'm people short. Um, dangerously low level population, less than 10. And so I want to try to find any ways to get more people that I could possibly do. One of them is with matchmaker if you have three courage, but get that courage during summon phase. And the other way is by doing augury and roll well with um, founder's eye face painting. And then the other way is just by getting love juice to drop off a monster. So I need people though. It, it's, it's really like crucial right now. Okay, anyway, so we have five endeavors, boom. All right, next up we update the timeline, which is somewhere. So we're going to update that bad boy to Lantern Year 17. And then we'll see what event we get. Which has already been determined. Which I hope isn't one of the things that, I've, I've, that repeat that I've seen before. Because A, I think it's like it's too punishing at this point in time. And because I've had so many times. And B, I just want to see different stuff like I don't mind seeing the same thing again 
I just don't want to see things again that have already been repeated, that were that are like scheduled to repeat, right? So we'll see. See what we get. What we get is. Uh, are you fucking serious? Out of all of the cards, and I shuffled, and I made sure I shuffled differently so I didn't like somehow was gaining the deck by always shuffling the same way, I drew murder. That's like the worst one. Only because next year there's going to be a murder, and my population is in the toilet, as you know. Uh, so let me just think if I'm going to house rule this or not. Because honestly, this is like... I mean, this type of shit is what's going to end the game for me, is the fact that I have all of my good people die, or even that have really cool abilities, and then they all die. And so I can't share the abilities, or I don't have enough people to go out. I'm just like, come on, out of the entire deck of like 20 cards, I get murder? Come on, man. That is... Uh, kind of stupid, if you ask me. Another reason why murder is such a problem is because I have no society. Like, if I had societal principle, then you have choices they can do that are different from this, oh, whatever happens, happens. And so it keeps happening because I have no society. And the only way you get a society principle is you get to 15 people. But I can't get to 15 people because people keep dying. And because people keep dying, I can't get to the principle. So it's like, ah. Uh, ah, uh, man. Really? Murder? Really? Wow. Wow. Uh, fuck, man. Like, I was planning on that happening next Lantern year and then kind of gaming the system because I know the requirements on who's going to die to try to, so I could, like, choose who dies. But now, since it's just happening like that, I mean, shit, dude. I don't even know who, who I would lose. Uh, I just can't believe I drew that card. Swear to God, man. Really? Boy. Um. Man. It's not like it's necessarily a bad card because different things happen because bad stuff happens. The problem is just the fact that my population is so low that if I have a, a TPK, total party kill, and everybody dies in a nemesis encounter or something, I won't have enough people to even go out again with a party of four is the problem. The other problem is I'm trying to keep skills within civilization by giving it to people, but if I have someone randomly die and I haven't shared that skill yet, like for example, Legendary Lungs, and it's like, well, fuck, man, that sucks. You know what I mean? Um, uh, shit. All right, well, I mean, that's what I drew, so I'll just roll with it. Um, my current population right now is nine, so if somebody dies this Lantern year and next Lantern year, then that means I only have seven people, which means if I have a TPK, I won't even have four people that can go out. I only have three, which includes Isma, which sucks. I really, I kind of right now don't even have a full party, right? Ah, oh, man. this It's even more pressure to have kids now, the fact that I keep getting murdered. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, well, I'll roll with it. I might house rule the results, but I'll roll with it, whatever. Let's see what happens. Okay, so what does it say? So this is what the card looks like. Don't worry about trying to read it. Don't try to read it. Don't worry trying about trying to read it, because I'll read it to you. I just wanted to give an idea of what it looks like. And we're going to be doing the bottom one. So the uh, kind of, oh man, that sucks, face, because we have no society. Well, we have no society principle. I guess we don't have a society. We have a settlement, but people are, I mean, how many murders have already happened, you know? I've had, and I've had murders from hunt reenactments and God, uh, I've had I, I've had more people die than my times two than my current population. I've had nineteen people die, and my current population is nine. So, let's say that's why it's an issue because like 
people don't live long enough in the society to even like share a uh, weapon speciality because by the time they they are with the group for three years they die. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it says here someone in the settlement has been murdered. The survivor with the highest hunt experience is the victim. They are dead. So who has the highest hunt experience? And I hope to God it's not the person with legendary lungs. Um, so it looks like no one that went out is it because I have a uh, other people with higher experience looks like. Um, so it looks like the person with the highest hunt experience is Jer, who has nine hunt experience. So he's definitely the person who's going to die, looks like. Which he uh, didn't have stuff that people can also share. But what sucked is he's had a lot of good stats, right? Um, okay, so he's going to be the victim, unfortunately. Um, another thing I need to do probably after the stream is I need to photocopy and make more of these cards because I'm getting really low. What's funny is I only need once a couple settlement sheets per campaign just for overflow. But I like having a unique sheet for every character I create and not erase and everything and put a new name just to record their history. And so it's like I should have gotten multiples of this and only half of this. But anyway, that's just my recommendation. Because I, I like saving the cards like, oh, that was this person's stuff. Anyway. Um, okay, so Jared's going to be the victim. Now, the person that killed, let's see, the murderer is the survivor with the highest insanity, was caught in the act, and is awaiting punishment. So who has the highest insanity? That, I actually have no idea. I have to look. Emily has 19, so my guess it's probably Emily. But, we'll see. Yeah, we've got 7, 3, 11, 12, 12, 15, 4, and I believe that's a, is that a 17 or 19? Either way, it looks like she's the highest. Um, again, what sucks is she had some good stats. She had Timeless Eye, which I would have liked to share because you can get a perfect hit on a 9. And again, if you get a perfect hit on counterweight axe or skull cap hammer you can gain the system because this is guaranteed wounds and this one is you know the ability to stun um i don't think i gave timeless eye to anybody so i think i'm gonna lose that fighting arts unfortunately it was really good on that person because i have a roll to nine i was able to do counterweight axe easier to hit Yeah, I think I'm going to lose that ability, unfortunately. Now, she also had Unconscious Fighter. Which I think I'm going to lose that one also. I don't think anyone else has that. I have other people with a red fist. I mean, I don't even know if Emily's going to die. Like, Jir is the one who's going to die. It just, if we punish Emily, then she's going to die too, right? And then I know next Lantern Year, whoever has the next highest experience is going to die. And I don't want to lose everybody with King Step because I want to share that when I fight the. Uh... Of course, Barrett does have King Step, so I will, I will still have it. I have people with Red Fist, Extra Sense. <sighs> Shit. Okay, well, anyway. So, Jer's, Jer was killed, so first let me record that. And then Emily will get a bonus because Jer dies. And then I'll get a random resource because of cannibalism. So let me shuffle the resources first. Because of my death trait and my religion, whenever someone dies, up to three people to actually witness the death can get a plus one permanent stat of their choice. Which is similar to the light trait. But that only happens if you do intimacy. The child and the parents all get it. 
all the children and the parent get it. I really need people bad. I mean, getting stats and resources is a good thing. It's just losing particular fighting arts, especially that's a huge thing in my custom campaign, is a blow. Especially Timeless Eye. Like before, I didn't care, but now that I'm doing Counterweight Axe and Skullcap Hammer as dependable things that I need to get a perfect hit, I either need to have it so it's easier to get that hit or that rolls so many dice that one of them is the hit. So that, that's what's just un unfortunate, losing that ability. Unfortunately. But I do have Saga, so any child that's born has two hunt experience, which means they'll immediately get age one, and then we'll get a fighting art, so that is also true. But I need to have kids. Okay, I'm just finishing shuffling the resource deck. The random resource we get is a monster hide. So now we also have monster hide. Okay. So we get a monster hide. Emily gets one stat. So I will give her... Um, I'll give her plus one luck. Maybe she'll, she'll luck out being killed. So now she's at plus three. Okay. Um, and then Jer was killed. So I put an X. And then I update the uh, settlement with all the info as well as say that, that murder happened. I just can't believe out of 20 cards, a fucking Drew murder. I swear to God. It's like the worst one, and I drew it. Get a natural 20 on myself. Okay, so death count goes to add additional death count. Population goes to eight. Put an X next to Jer, and then say how died. Say murdered by Emily. A kingdom death, it, indeed. It's a kingdom of mortality rate is complete, very low. Okay, so I've updated the death, and I got the stat and the resource. Now we continue with the event. So it says select a table that corresponds with the settlement society principle which is no society because I don't have any principles yet. So then I roll and see what happens. And hope that God this doesn't repeat. I don't know what's worth, worse right now, losing a person or having a repeat. Well, I guess if it repeats, you keep losing people. I guess that's worse at this point in time. All right, I'm just gonna shove stuff a little bit so I have space for my uh, dice rolling. Okay, we rolled a four. Uh, the other survivors in the settlement cannot determine the truth and reluctantly free the accused. This year, departing survivors gain plus five insanity, but minus two survival. So that means my bonus when I go out then is only going to be plus one survival, which is going to suck. But everyone will get plus five insanity, which is good. It's just I need, need to make sure I send people out that already have survival. So it's for that reason really possible that the same party goes out because they already have a lot of survival, but we'll see. Okay, so we rolled a four, so I'm just gonna do a marker to indicate what it was. Um, so I know which result to go with. Actually, I'll do this. This way I can mark it. So, I, I, so, so that this way is a reminder, everyone will get plus five insanity Minus two survival when they go out. Okay, so that was murder, which sucked, but wasn't terrible. 
But Jer is dead. That sucks. Okay. Now what do we do? Now we still have five endeavors. And we want to get more people. We want to innovate. And we want to definitely, like I said, share abilities before we lose them. So because of Timeless Eye is so largely important, um, I'm thinking that might change things a little bit because I want to share that ability with people. And I want to share Legendary Longs with people. So that's two Shadow Rituals right there. Now one of the problems with doing Shadow Ritual is that person can't go out on the next hunt. So that's the other thing that sucks. So if I do both Shadow Rituals I'm planning to, then t both Emily and um, Taken can't go out on the next hunt if I plan on doing that. Which means I can have people take their place. And then do I have someone who can go out who has decent survival? I do. I Actually, I do. Sona and Volva, they both do. That's true. Yeah. Now, Sona has binge eating. Oh, no, Sona's retired. That's right, Fear of the Dark. Oh, man. See, my population, I have less people to go out than I thought. She's retired, and Isma is maimed. So I only have two other people. I only have six people that could hunt. So it'd have to be Volva. And Ren only has two survival. So. Hmm. Interesting problem. I just don't want to lose Timeless Eye if I don't have to. Just because that's great for the hammer and it's great for this weapon. Or if I give other people the same weapon. Um, of course, they won't have the same... Actually, yeah, they would. They couldn't do Red Charm, which is... You don't have to worry about wounding. But if you anyone has the axe, if you ever roll a, t a 10, or in this case, a 9 or a 10, you'll always get a free wound. So, God, both of those are really good to share. And again, this whole thing I'm doing with the Shadow Ritual, that's another custom thing. So, it's in my campaign. Um, as a reminder, what it is, is... Uh, you can have a survivor get a random disorder and skip the next hunt in order to share any fighting art, any secret fighting art, or any weapon specialization with up to three different people. It's, and it also costs endeavor to do. So it costs an endeavor, a random disorder, and can't go on the next hunt. But then you can share it with three people. Um... I don't know. It's just like, shh, fuck, man. I wanted to have more attempts to get kids. But there's no guarantee that when I, when I endeavor with augury, they even roll a seven or better is the other thing. So there's no guarantee. Fuck. What? Well, okay. Let me do what I can do. That might influence stuff later on. Okay. So we'll, we'll you know, we've assessed what our current situation is. We have six people who can hunt. Four, only four can go out. Is my worst case scenario can go up.